perfectly on time. So uh, let's go around the room and just have everybody introduce themselves. We've got a, like everyone's pretty much back from the last class, except we've got Wendy, who's new, who wasn't able to make it last time, so we're really excited to have her. But Jennifer, you want to start and go around and yeah. introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jenny Bunkett. I have a teething jewelry company, January Moon, and I, I'm not great with social media. I'm actually I'm really uncomfortable with it, and so I'm trying to learn how you utilize it more, because I know it's an important part of um, running a small business. And it seems like the most accessible way to reach your audience, but I'm uncomfortable with it and I don't understand it. So I'm trying to get past that. Yep. Hi, I'm Bailey. I'm a content strategist for Data Driven Design. I do a lot of the blog posts, writing, and social media. Hey, I'm Wendy Felbury. I work for William City, which is the Williamson County Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Office. Um, my job is to run the social media campaigns and blogs and write articles about our members to go in the magazines around the county. I'm Shara. I work for a branding company here in town and uh, you can never learn enough. So um, I work with Paul. Paul's one of our trusted partners and I'm constantly calling and asking him questions. <laughs> so I thought I would just go ahead and take this on our own. Awesome. I'm Casey, I'm a very manager and design as a digital strategist. Um, so I'm on Google AdWords, SEO, digital strategy. Casey, manager of design as well. Um, I'm similar to daily content strategy and social media. Brittany Binkley now, I just got married, I keep using the wrong name. <laughs> um, I actually own a digital marketing company and I work with clients and do um, digital campaign strategies and management and creation and all that good stuff and I love to learn like so I'm constantly enrolling in any training I can get in because even if I know the concept I always pick up some new way of doing things that makes me more efficient so I geek out on this stuff. So <laughs> I'm going to try to not like you know because no, you, you geek out. I've I seen do. you in action. Yeah. So I'm to stop me. You just smack me. Too yeah. geeky. Okay. I'm not going to get anything I'll better. Ask for a refund. Bring, bring both of you in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll do. Well, and then Chris, Chris Demagian, web developer here at Data Driven Design. So I do a lot of coding uh, and managing a lot of my websites and web projects. Josh in the back. Josh Goodwin, work with uh, Paul and everybody at Data Driven um, in the digital marketing and doing SEO tasks. Cool. And, uh, so this is a cool like um, small group. Uh, we split it up into two, like morning and afternoon. Um, this time, actually, for the next three classes. So it's kind of nice uh, to have this size group. So we hope to be able to um, present, but also help and teach and like get everybody kind of into a working session. And we want everybody to feel like they're able to accomplish something or at least learn something that they want to take back and try. And um, I am Paul Hickey, and uh, Chris and I are going to be teaching the class today. Oh, hey, Megan, how are you? Hey, how are you? Come on in. No, you're good. Come on up here. And um, so. We haven't started, Megan, so you're good. And you can be right here. Yeah. To Brittany's point, I am excited to geek out as well. I'm going to try <laughs> to actually teach and not uh, geek out too much, but. Um, I'm definitely not as good a teacher as, as Kate or Chris, but um, thank you everyone for coming. And I really appreciate everyone's attitude about like wanting to learn and um, Sherry and Brittany. I think it's uh, super classy and, and right on the money. Like you can never you can never know it all. Like even when you're in the business, and so it's good to just get together and and knowledge share. And I appreciate the support, everyone. So um, we're gonna jump right into like why we're here and what we're going to learn today. So today's learning targets. Um, the main thing, the main reason why we're here is because the data, um, as well as just everyone can see kind of in their daily life where people's attention is. And so um, like, to, you know, what Jennifer was saying earlier about knowing that she needs to be on social media, but being a little bit like, how do I dip my toe in the water and get going on it, but I know I need to be there. So we're just going to reiterate like 
why we're spending so much time today on Facebook, because you'll see that 95% of what we're going to be talking about is Facebook. We're going to talk about like how to build a strategy because we we know that there has to be business goals behind all of these things that we're doing. Otherwise, it's really easy to get sidetracked or start to question whether or not something's working. And I think, honestly, in my experience, 99% of the sort of failed campaigns that happen are because there was no real goal set up front and no real strategy, no real strategy around like how we're gonna measure success and what we can expect, what we should expect at each point in time through the campaign. Um, and even the best of us have been guilty of like, okay, we've got to do this. Like, there's a deadline for it. We need to do it, get it out, and get it running. But then it's um, so I think it's easy to overlook that. So we're gonna we're gonna spend some time on that, and then we're gonna try to spend most of our time in Facebook Ads Manager to make you guys feel like masters, even though it's kind of unrealistic to actually master it today. We just want you guys to feel like you learned enough to get in there and just be trying it. My thing is like, I'm self-taught pretty much at all of this, and that includes, to me, that includes just like peer talk, like being taught by my peers, like asking questions, trying different things, staying up late at night, early in the morning, just like experimenting with things for years. And so that, basically the only reason I say that is because there's no like, there's no degree for this, there's no um, expert really at it, you just, if you try it, then you're going to feel comfortable with it and you're going to have a knowledge level that makes you feel like you're achieving something. And so I just don't want anyone to feel intimidated by all of this and then not try things. So and they're going to change it. Yeah. They're going to change it. <laughs> and you don't need to know it all. You just need to try things uh, that work with what your goals are and, and um, then adjust from there. So we're going to talk about how to deploy ads, like basically, um, and I'll, we'll get into, like last session we talked about boosted posts, and we're gonna get you all of last session because I know that's gonna help you out a lot, but we talked about boosted posts, so we're gonna talk about why they're different from ads, and then um, implementing the Facebook pixel, what that actually is, how to implement it. We could probably even, depending on your setup, we could probably help you with that today in terms of potentially getting it implemented. Um, and then custom audiences, which are really cool to me. So basically, if you've ever, I mean, my real life example is that I go to Nike.com on my phone, and I'm like, and Kate's watching Game of Thrones, and I'm like surfing my phone because I've already seen all the episodes. And so I'm on Nike.com looking for shoes, and I put a bunch of shoes in my cart, and I've got like a thousand dollars worth of shoes in my cart, and there's no way I'm going to buy all those shoes, but I want to keep them there. So then I leave and I come back like a week later and I remove things from my cart and I make my purchase. But like in the meantime, the reason really one of the like the things that kind of helped me remind myself to make the purchase was that like when I would go on Facebook, I would see the exact shoes over and over again, all the different pairs that were in my cart. So I probably spent like maybe a few hundred extra dollars on shoes because I saw all the shoes that were in my cart. So Nike, that's what that's what this is. So like don't get like don't worry about like oh remarketing or custom audiences blah blah blah. Like that's the terminology that's in Facebook. So we'll show you that. But that's really what that is for the for the customer. So and it can work with any business. It doesn't have to be like an e-commerce business. It can be service related. So just real quick, we're gonna run you through why social media and why Facebook specifically. So um, we're data driven. So 2017 data, 70% um, of US adults use at least one social media site, which is continuing to rise. Um, and you can definitely get, you can see as we go through this, each social media outlet has somewhat of a different audience composition. And so we feel like we try to preemptively answer the question. Our recommendation is that businesses are on all the different social media outlets. We're gonna name four specifically today that we feel like you should be on. There's probably like five or six more that we get into for a lot of like work that we do. Um, but the, the four, um, Facebook far away number one, just 
not only the largest audience, which you'll see in a minute, but also um, the highest click-through rates um, on the ads. And they're nine, eight and nine times uh, the click-through rates of other web banner ads. Instagram has over 500 million monthly active users, which is insane. It's just like the most relevant platform. The thing that you'll love about today is that from face, and some of you already know this, is that from Facebook Ads Manager, you can deploy the same exact campaigns to Instagram. And so because we're covering so much, and we have somewhat of an idea where everyone is with this, our recommendation is to do that because you don't need that. You can deploy ads from your Instagram app on your phone, but we're going to show you how to do it from Facebook. Um, LinkedIn has obviously a very different audience, uh, 133 million US users. Um, and then Twitter actually is becoming, we put them number four because they're not the most relevant to advertise on, but it's important to have a presence there and they do have very good uh, audience targeting in terms of their ads platform. And it's very, all of these are low cost per audience attention, which I'm big on. So it's you, for $50 or $100, you can make an impact in these platforms and reach, we want you to be able to reach all of your different audiences. So it's about audience composition, but it's about prioritizing. And so, um, Twitter has, doesn't have an algorithm, so what's important about that is that you can just basically essentially shout to the user and you can be in front of them really at any given time. Whereas in Facebook and Instagram, you have to have, like we talked about in the last session, you have to have content that they've engaged with at a high level um, to show up in their feed. And so uh, LinkedIn also is high income, so set, um, average annual income is $75,000 a year. So what's interesting about this to me is like, I think everyone thinks of LinkedIn as a B2B platform, which it is, but you can, like if you're selling a product uh, or a service that a consumer would buy, also that's high dollar, that that's a differentiator to get there because uh, there's not a lot, of, there's a lot of white space as it relates to LinkedIn for like consume, not many consumer products or advertising on LinkedIn, so that's interesting as well. Um, Instagram has just stayed relevant with basically copying all of Snapchat. We had a stat in here about Snapchat, and then we're like, we're not going to talk about Snapchat. We're not doing Pinterest. Snapchat. Pinterest, we've, um, we kind of removed Pinterest from the equation mainly because from a mobile standpoint, it's been the platform that will, where Facebook will add things, is they have a store visits objective. So if you're working with a client or you're a local business um, with brick and mortar or work with local businesses with brick, I'm thinking, I'm looking at you, Wendy, because I'm thinking this might be relevant to like all the Williamson Chamber members, but like you can actually measure how many people come to your brick and mortar location from a Facebook ad, which to me, like completely blows my mind. It's like so game changing that like, it's like, why would you not do that? And have that, if that's like, that should be your marketing objective. And it's based around like the location services being enabled on your phone. And so like if Josh uh, sees an ad on his phone and then like Facebook's gonna know that Josh, that that phone then went to that location that ran the ad, and so it's gonna track that, which is pretty amazing. So that's what this is. But the goals that I think are most relevant for today would be, um, so the, there's a goal, and then um, we're gonna work on setting goals, and these align with our strategy that we're gonna walk you guys through for building the social media ad strategy, and then the objective that you would pick to run the ad. So the first goal that we're gonna talk about when we talk about our social media ads strategy is in phase one, we want to build awareness. So it's like we're starting from nothing. We're, we need to think of ourselves like a brand new business because for the most part, pretty much everyone in here, maybe with the exception of Brittany, like with some clients that she works with, it's like the first time that we're kind of running content and ads in, in Facebook. So think of yourself that way and that like, we're just going to build awareness first. So you're going to we're gonna want you to pick either a reach or an engagement goal, objective rather, when you start to create your ad. So we'll show this to you in a minute. And then um, phase two is gonna be 
finding potential customers. So then, and we're talking, when I say phases, I'm literally talking about months on the calendar. So like months one through, like months one and two slash three are gonna be just building awareness. No expectations around getting any new customers from these ads. Um, then we'll move you into running ads where now you're gonna select objectives that are gonna be more aggressively trying to get you new customers. And so those, goal, those objectives for that goal of new customers will be conversions, lead generation, and messages, which I think is kind of cool. We'll talk about exactly what that is later. Um, and then of course, it's like, okay, bottom line, we've got to drive revenue, we've got to drive sales. And so in phase three, now we're moving to more aggressive objectives, which is engagement, app installs, which isn't as relevant, but Facebook has it for anyone who's ever um, needing to drive people to download an app. Um, Conversions and messages is, is a uh, complementary objective for that one too. So this is kind of what I was talking about. For the first six to nine months, no revenue should be expected from these Facebook market, like these Facebook ad efforts, really. Um, but then each subsequent month, the expectation should be that you would get two to three times the ROI of your, of your ad spend. So if you're like you're rolling out your strategy for 2018 and you want to include Facebook, um, I would definitely um, advise you to set the expectations that way because um, you know you, you might spend five thousand dollars for the first nine months and you don't see anything and you start to get questioned for that. But that's why the strategy is to move like. It's by design to move you through. It's then when you get to the conversion objective, people start to buy things, people start to sign up for your services. And then, and like Chris and I were talking yesterday, if that's not, uh, if it's not working at that point, like each subsequent month, okay, then it's, it's you know, something's broken within uh, what that strategy is. But Chris, do you have anything to add on that before we? No, I mean, forward? it's tough to have to wait that long. Yeah. But it really is a kind of, yeah, it takes that much investment and, um, before you actually see all this stuff click. Um, so the phases again, awareness, web traffic, and conversions. Um, and what this means in terms of tactics, again, just to reiterate, is that you're gonna go to a general audience, then you're gonna move to uh, ads that are going to be more, you're going to be targeting people that are more likely to be aware of you, and then you're going to be targeting super smaller groups that have already seen your content, like my Nike shoe example. Um, and then you're going to examine, and it won't, it won't be all black and white. Some, some things will work and some things won't, and that's the beauty of it. And you'll just, so we're going to teach you today kind of how to measure that. And I really just wanted to use a poop emoji in my presentation, so <laughs> busted. Um, but. Uh, Chris, you want to walk them through kind of the uh, setting and measuring goals for social ads in terms of what we feel like the basis for expectations would be. And I think this column over here is probably like the, uh, the important one yeah. in terms of. Yeah, so um, for awareness, um, so we have the three columns here, but um, there's some metrics in Ads Manager once you run your campaign that will show you um, and we're going to hit on three. Results is kind of the most obvious, like, overall, how did this thing do? But then it dives more into reach and frequency, and we'll get into, like, what those mean in a bit. Um, for web traffic, um, your cost per click is a good measurement. Your Google Analytics data, traffic to the website, what pages are they going on, what are they clicking on. And we'll actually get into a little bit of how Facebook can tell you some of this information as well. And it'll all come together um, at the end with connecting those two, um, Facebook and your website and that. Um, and then conversions, Google Analytics can tell you about conversions. Um, that's when you turn uh, someone who's seen your ad into like, you've gotten them to take the next step, right? So they've clicked on something, they've sent you uh, an, an email via your form, they've made a purchase, they've really taken that next step and they're no longer just out in the crowd seeing your ad, there's somebody now that you have uh, who's interacting with your business. Um, and so analytics will help you see that, but also Facebook 
has been really good about showing you actual conversions. We'll get to that at the end. And the cool thing is that Chris mentioned is that um, the phase one is um, where when you pick your marketing objective, like the slide I showed earlier, that is what your result is going to be. And so that's kind of like one main thing to take away from today. Like later on, um, Facebook just doesn't use the same terminology. So at first they'll say, pick your marketing objective, and then later it'll say cost per result. And so you'll be like, well, what's cost per result mean? And cost per result will mean whatever your marketing objective was that you selected. And so when we, uh, when we talk about in phase one measuring success in Facebook, we want to make phase one like the easiest possible for you guys because you're just going to be creating awareness and you're going to be only like not really worrying about Google, what's happening in Google Analytics yet, but just looking at Facebook in terms of your cost per result, your reach, and your frequency. So these are all columns that can be, when you log into Ads Manager, if you go over to uh, this plus signal over here, uh, the plus icon, you can click add other columns. And I would recommend always having results, frequency, um, and then by default they're always going to have uh, pretty much I think people taking action, amount, amount spent, but you may need to add some of these other things. And then for, like, for you guys that have more, I guess like traditional marketing experience, like impressions is always a stat that like everybody can kind of jive with, you know, and so like you could always add impressions. What's cool, what, and Brittany and I were talking about this earlier, it's like there's so much in here, you can add things like negative feedback, positive feedback as your columns, and you can actually see, um, see that in your reporting, and it's really easy to get, to get there. So again, just clicking that plus over there is an important step to measuring, measuring the awareness. Um, and then phase two, Chris talked about, we're gonna look at web traffic and engagement. So the, the point is like trying again trying to convert into a customer. Um, so we would look at a screen like this in Google Analytics. Every every one of you that has Google Analytics installed on your website, you can find this view. We can show you how to find this view, um, and you'll be able to see the social network breakdown of how well uh, your Facebook ads are driving traffic to your site and what that traffic's doing. So that's what you want to look at in phase two. And then in phase three, the conversion side of that, again, like we're not gonna worry too much about this for today, but I did wanna show it to you guys, is that you can actually see, and if you're not an e-commerce company, but you wanna put a value on a lead, you can do that in Google Analytics, and, or a value on a meeting or something like that, you can do that in Google Analytics, and you can have a monetary value around anything that uh, your social media ads that you've been running, how they've contributed to conversions. So, I'm gonna geek out for two seconds and then come back and teach the class. So, this is like a view that exists in Google Analytics where you can see how social media has played a role in a conversion. And so, um, it's every single conversion that's on a website and how the user got to that conversion. So, in other words, like on this one, uh, search ad four times and then came back and typed the website URL in and then converted. Um, and so that's, we're almost to the end of kind of talking through the strategy side. Um, the last, I think, main point here is that we've got a uh, messenger now. And so we all. What do you mean by down force people on to Sorry, I got We all are. I'm guilty of thinking like, okay, you've got a page on your website that you want somebody to fill out. And so let's measure how many people fill out that form and let's create a goal in Google Analytics around that and then just see how many of those we get. Well, then going back to our last class, we talk about going where people are, making it easy for them to find you because they're already there, creating content that's relevant to them, and then when you think about it, like why wouldn't Messenger be a conversion? And now Facebook, like very recently, is now saying that that's a marketing objective. So basically, like they're wanting customers to contact businesses through the Messenger app, not because they're trying to be a pain to the business, but because they know that that's going to be the easiest for the customer who's on Facebook. 
especially on mobile. Uh, have you noticed so. if you go on a business page or a, a, just a page that's you know set up that way, the messenger mail is already popping up automatically. And I have one client we had to turn it off because they're horrible about responding to their messages. So I had to put in an auto responder, be like, please don't do this Facebook because you're uh, but if the ones that do respond, it's great because it gets yeah. them engaged. Yeah, and so there's definitely a difference between creating extra work or yeah. actually having leads. And so, but it is uh, something to be cognizant of checking because we want to make sure that those count. Those should count as conversions. Can I make a note on that? Yeah, last absolutely. Slide? I would just say, in all of your strategy, you know, we're boosting posts and we're running ads. Don't forget about the free ways that you can contact your customers without paying. And that's built into this, and that's in Facebook, primarily comments and direct messages. Um, people may comment on the post that you didn't pay a boost, saying like, hey, what's some info on this thing, whatever you talked about. Don't um, forget about those. So when you're scheduling your post for the week, while that's great, don't forget to jump back in there every other day, every day. See if people are commenting. Turn on notifications so you know when that's happening. Because you could miss out on free leads, free conversions on the comment section. Even people who have liked, they're showing some interest more than just a Facebook user. Um, I would say that likes, comments, shares, shares are probably the most valuable free thing. Um, people who have sent that post to their group. Um, but those three things are built into every post. Don't forget about them. Don't post for the week and then not come back and make sure you're like, oh, somebody commented. But keep an eye on that because that's a great way to engage with your customers. You don't have to pay anything for that. Um, and that goes to Twitter and Instagram as well. Keep, it, keep tabs on the comment section um, and messages, even if it's a pain in the butt. These are free ways that you can access your customers, make them feel a little bit more personal, I'd say. And that's still a conversion. You know, Getting in contact with them for free, I would count as a conversion. Yeah, because to the point of like, um, we call it assisted conversions. And that's what Google Analytics calls it. So when you're on, if you're running a Facebook ad, uh, there's going to be a way to measure like, did that lead come from the ad or did it come from a non-paid uh, uh, organic post? But to Chris's point, like, it's all part of the strategy. And so if it came from an organic post, um, it should count at some level as an assisted conversion to the overall, the overall ad campaign. And um, those can be black and white numbers in Google Analytics, but uh, that's a good point on that. So real quick, I'm gonna walk you guys, just this, so this is a review of one of the learning targets, which was the strategy, like how to build the strategy. So I'm gonna kind of show you like a real life example of what the strategy looks like. And so um, this is a kind of, uh, the, the numbers and stuff like that are just kind of scaled for the, uh, for the discussion today. But phase one is to, again, target just a general audience for awareness. Phase two is going to be to, now phase two is going to use the tracking pixel, which we're going to show you guys how to implement. Who, who has the tracking pixel already like down and implemented? You're good with the pixel. I think I have it. You think you have it? It's, okay, cool. Do you, are you familiar with the No, I mean, I saw it, but I, was, I okay. wasn't sure if like, I cool. needed to use the web situation with it or what. It is, a web, <laughs> it is kind of a web development task. Yeah. So we can show you um, how to just send it to your web developer and request that they install it for you. Uh, or we, or if, this, if, if you have access to your website and you're, you know. you're the person that would do that anyway, <laughs> um, we could probably help you do, just okay. do that. Um, what about you, Wendy? Yeah, you no have? idea. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so, and it might be TBD kind of on a web destination anyway for you. You know, like if you if you feel like there's a the the dot com for you guys or the what's your URL? Is it the WilliamsonInc.com? No, WilliamsonChamber.com. WilliamsonChamber.com. Okay. So, um, if uh, if there's a webmaster or like a like a process that needs to happen to get that Facebook tracking pixel installed for you guys. We'll be happy to help with that or show you how to do it today. And even right. like send the message to the person, all the information that they would need today. And then you could follow up if you want to. But that will allow you to do what's in phase two and phase three, um, which is the custom audience and 
uh, all that fun stuff, which to me is really fun. Um, so we're just going to run, uh, we're going to take our content that we created already in the last session that's, you know, that we feel good about that we're working. Um, and we're going to um, just run basically like $20 a day. Um, that's actually a pretty high budget. It doesn't have to be that high. Um, but this particular example, this is actually a real life example of doing this, so I wanted to include it. Um, and we're running it on Facebook, the Instagram feed, and the Messenger home. And uh, we're paying for impressions, but there's a setting called Optimize for Conversions. We're going to show all you guys this stuff. And we're running it to a landing page uh, specific to that, to a product that's in the photo. Um, and we're doing the same thing. We have a second ad that's a different product that's running to a general, when I say general audience, like literally there's no audience uh, target. It's U. It's United States, people who speak US English, and there's no um, interest groups or anything like that that we've filled out. Um, does anyone, does, it, does everyone know what I'm talking about? I'm happy to like explain that or, or, or show you, like, we'll show you guys that too. Um, that's in, in coming up. Um, and then it's running to a, the product that's in that photo. Same thing here. So we basically have three ads, three different products, general audience. Um, now, our assumption is going to be it's like three months later, four months later. Um, maybe there have been some sales from this, but probably not. And so now what are we going to do? So now we're going to go in and create a uh, we're going to use the Facebook tracking pixel to create a custom audience of people who have been to our website in the last 30 to 90 days, and then we're going to create a look-alike audience off of that. So a look-alike audience, so you might have, and it's really cool because it doesn't mean that it has to, that the user had to have come from Facebook to your website to count as a, like to remarket back to, to the user on Facebook. Um, it could be any, anyone who's visited your website in the last 90 days that then comes to Facebook. You're, that's basically who you're hitting. So they already have an awareness level of who you are because they've been to your website. Then what you can do is use Facebook's data to, to say, now grab me as many other people that look like, look like those people from a profile standpoint and include them in a different audience called a lookalike audience. So that can take like a 1,000 person audience of people who have been to your website in the last 90 days up to like a 40,000 person audience or something, you know, depending and depending on if you're going with the geographic target or anything else with your campaign. Um, that's the purpose behind the lookalike audience. And so this is what we were talking about earlier with in phase two being a little bit more aggressive with, um, and I think aggressive is the wrong word, but it's more targeted at people who already have a high awareness level of you. I'll let you jump in because I'm thinking about some of the stuff we talked about yesterday with frequency, so I'm going to add that if you want to jump in and yeah. kind of take the next, the next couple. So I would just say real quick on frequency, um, and this will kind of make sense, I think, in your head based on how you use Facebook if you do, but um, with any ad, the more you see it, the more you kind of maybe, well, I guess we'll go in two directions. Mm -hmm. The more you see an ad, the more you're less likely to like care about that ad, it might become annoying, it might become, um, like why am I seeing this a billion times, you know, you might actually be aware of that. Um, or some people, if you're making a purchase, need to see something a few times before Paul bought his Nike shoes. He probably needed a couple of those ads. Anyways, this is all measured in frequency. Um, and so you have to play this balancing game. You don't want your ad to be showing so much that your performance dies. But you want it to be showing maybe a couple times if you're trying to sell a product or get somebody to convert. There's a metric in Facebook that you all will see called frequency. And um, it goes from one to uh, I've seen six, seven, eight. And so I wouldn't say that like a five or six is bad if your ad is still performing well. Um, but if your ad stops performing and you see that high frequency, just think in your head like, okay, maybe the same people are seeing
this ad multiple times and they're not caring about it anymore. Um, so that's an important thing to kind of think about with all this. It's one of those things we said you could add to your results panel as well, frequency. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you basing the frequency just on the ad or on the ad set? Because I know, like, we'll see a frequency in the ad set that says, like, eight or nine, and I'm like, oh, my God, and then you'll get into the ads, and there's multiple ads within that ad set, and they're showing, like, two to three, which is where I would go specifically on each ad. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so ad sets are just basically a way of organizing like ads together, and so um, it's a... Uh, if you're building out, like when I built out this, I used ad sets because um, there were so many similarities. Like I, I skipped a few slides because it's basically multiple ads with different products. Um, but definitely on the ad, like per ad basis, because each one's going to add. And what Chris is talking about on the frequency side, um, when he says whether or not your ad's performing, I would just. I would use cost per result for that. So if you have uh, a high frequency and a high cost per result, it would be pretty bad. But if you have a high frequency and a low cost per result, then that would be pretty good. And a high frequency would be like five or six. So I mean, like Josh saw the ad five times, but if it's costing me 20 cents each time for Josh to see the ad, and that's in my general audience, that's in my phase one, then, then it's like, that makes sense that when I'm trying to do that are already customers of mine, um, or they've opted into my e-newsletter, and so I want to get a different kind of message out to them on Facebook. Um, and then also, um, this is the custom audience side of going into Ads Manager and building out. Now you can uh, pick people who have visited specific pages on my site. So it's really easy to go in and um, say that I want to show this particular ad to people who, who saw this page. Whereas phase two was more, I want to show the ad to people who saw my website. And this is more, this is now getting down into um, really getting them on, where basically it's my shoot, my Nike Can shoot. Can you put example. in competitive URLs in there? Um, this would be the tracking pixel, so it's only, it only will allow you to the closest thing that you're getting to that would be like if you create a lookalike audience, then in theory you could be getting some people who are interested in some of your competitors because they might look like your audience right. a little bit. Um, but that's a good question. So um, these are things that you can do with the pixel. Does anyone have any questions that like you can upload a customer file, you can remarket back to your website traffic once you have the, the pixel installed. Um, and then you can create a list of people who, like, if, if, you're, if it has to do with any kind of mobile app or game or anything like that, you can actually, that's how, like, if you're ever on a mobile app or playing a game on your mobile phone and you're seeing specific things that have to do with what you were browsing maybe on your desktop machine, like, that is also powered through um, some of the Facebook content, so. Um, so the Pixel, let's, we, now we can kind of get into showing you guys how to actually get some of this stuff done. So on the um, installing the Pixel, there's a way to, like if you, the easiest way to find it really if you don't have it is if you start to create an ad. Um, and actually, I can kind of come around and help, help with some of this. If you just kind of go and maybe select like a brand awareness ad, and you're not going to run anything, but you just kind of go to the next step. And uh, I'm going to walk around and show you guys my computer here too. I'm not logging in on the big screen. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm at the point of creating, yeah, you're getting there. So if you scroll down, and click continue. 
Yeah, it'll be on the screen. It'll be on the screen where you're actually like uploading your creative. You'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and it'll show you um, pixel tracking. Pixel can track a number of different things. Um, at the base level, installing the Pixel gets you page view tracks. So people who visit a page are automatically counted on the Pixel. Beyond that though, there are more advanced settings. You can The Pixel can track button clicks, form confirmations, purchases on an e-commerce store. All these things can be tracked um, and enabled just like a page view but you don't need a new pixel for that. The same pixel will work for all of us, and, and a web developer will know how to get that lock, uh, locked in. But you can, in the future, get more data from your pixel without uh, really changing much of anything at all. Have you ever run into any problems implementing any of the other options there? Like, uh, because I think it's a great point that Chris makes. Like. You can achieve the strategy that I'm talking about by just installing the Pixel and then using, and I'm about to show you guys in a minute how to just um, build that custom audience, and that would be probably the other thing. We'll kind of come around and show you guys how to get through an ad. Most of you already have gotten through an ad, but we'll help everybody get through an ad and then um, also go in where to go in and how to create that custom audience, which is easier than what we just showed you on the Pixel. But then, so you could always do the page view one that Chris talked about, but when you want to do the more advanced ones, I guess my question to you is like, is this going to be something that pretty much any web developer would be able to set up those, those options? Yeah, there's just a couple of scripts that a developer would need to paste into the right place in the code. Um, for instance, when you click a button, you can um, link a button click to an event, and, uh, and a developer will know how to get that routed to the Facebook pixel. It's one line of code, pretty easy. Um, and and it, what it does is it just adds, you'll see here, we've got the page view tag. That's going to come by default on every pixel. Ignore all of this. Just look for the word page view on the screen. That's what's coming by default. But there are other um, lines just like this that can get added that will change or add events. Like um, yeah, it can say lead. Um, purchase, uh, I think form confirmation, and the developer will know how to use those, but it's the same pixel. That little switch we saw, I said skip that for now. Those switches kind of enable these things. So when you do that, then you redo the code, and then it adds it, or you can add it into that. You don't need to redo the code, Okay. but the developer will need to add that tag to the proper event. 
so that the developer would need to add a button click event to a button on your site. Um, so it is a little bit of JavaScript knowledge, but, um, but the code doesn't need to change. It's the same pixel that can track all these events simultaneously. So within the ads manager, there's the ability to just basically email these instructions to your developer. And then would that be the get event code if they click that button? Yeah, Eric mentions the nine standard events. I mentioned some of those, you know, button clicks, form fill out, leads. There are nine events in there, and developers can create custom ones, whatever you would want to track. But emailing the instructions to the developer will go through um, the base code with page views, and it will also mention how to enable additional uh, tracking features. Sweet. So, like, if someone wanted to say, uh, I want to create one for people who have viewed these exact pages on my site. That would be an example of one that's not included in the nine, but that a developer could. could well, actually, you could do that. There's, in addition to page view, there's a view content. And I know that sounds the same, but um, that gets more specific. So if they viewed a specific image or a specific block of text, or they scroll to the right place on the landing page, you can work that in with some development knowledge as a view content feature. And you're getting way down into the minutia of like people who are on your site, really targeting them. Um, and so that, that is totally doable. Like I said, a little bit of development knowledge there, but it shouldn't take a developer more than a few minutes to get it going. Cool. So next up is creating and running the ads. And so does anyone have any, before we jump into that, does anyone have any questions just about where you are with running ads and about running ads specifically. I know Megan has run some ads. Brittany's run some ads. I've Jennifer. Run ads. Yeah, I'd like to see it again because I feel every time I do it, it's just a free for all. Okay. Then, Can I well, ask a, a, just a follow up question for you to that? Sure. What's your point of view on boosted posts versus paid ads? Um, I think it, it all relates to your business objective. I think a boosted post is a very turnkey way to create awareness and engagement. So boosted, if you're after like specific engagement on that post, then a boosted post is really all you need. But if you're wanting to drive kind of short-term or long-term long -term revenue goals or generate leads, then the ads strategy that we're walking through is more where you need to, where you need to be. Now, there's nothing wrong with like just creating awareness for however long you want just by boosting posts, but then when you're ready to take it to the next level, um, the strategy that we're laying out today with the kind of ads to general audiences, and then that what that does is just basically kind of widen your awareness, widen your top of your funnel so that you can get, you can have more more volume when you start to get more targeted. And uh, and then you can't do any of this stuff with boosted posts. You can only do it with ads. So boosted posts would be like an event? Boosted posts would be like an event, or like yeah. if there's something that you, if there's a photo that, you know, you posted and it got really good um, engagement just organically mm -hmm. and you wanted to just kind of highlight that or make, make that special in some way, keep that going. And another way, like, I mean, Chris was kind of saying this yesterday when we were talking about this presentation, like, if you made a post, like, six months ago that worked really well, um, boosting that to get that back in front of Mm -hmm. your audience, like to Brittany's point about just repurposing content, like that would be another. I also see boosted posts, and maybe you guys correct me, but seven days where ads campaigns can run a lot longer. Yeah, that's true, that's a good point. Shorter term, you know. <laughs> These ad examples that I've been walking you guys through in this strategy part of it were, have been running for a month, like the six to nine months, and they're like, some of them are the same ads. The like, same photos and everything. Yeah. Same copy. The ones that are working, we've just kept, like we've paused a lot of the ones that, it's not that they didn't work, they just weren't, you know, 
there was nothing special about them. We looked at the reach and the frequency and the uh, cost per result. And so we just, we didn't want to keep, we didn't want our, I mean, everyone in here probably doesn't want to spend $500 in the first month and then $1,000 and then $1,500 and then 2000 et etc. So we wanted to spend like $2,000 a month. Like that was our budget in this particular scenario. And so uh, in order to spend $2,000 but continue to try new things, we would need to like, we, like just pause what isn't working and, and add new new stuff that way. Keep what is working. You get this through ad set, so you have multiple ads running and then you could see which you could see what works and what didn't. Um, well, I did do one through, I don't know, like, I'm interested to get your take on this. To me, and I might be missing something, I just try to keep it simple and just run the ads, and if I only have one, if I only have, if I have an ad set with only one ad in it, but I'm running 20 ad sets and 20 ads, then, like, um, I don't, I haven't really found a disadvantage to that, but I know that, like, with this, this most recent one that I've set up, I did use ad sets in that, um, it was the same audience. So like when it was the same audience, I just like copied the ad to change the creative. But there's a lot of times I'm running ads that they're, com they're gonna be completely different audiences, but there might only be one ad in the ad set. Okay. So in that scenario, like I don't even pay attention to ad ads or ad sets. Okay. I don't know if that helps or not. Like I, almost, I just don't really think about it. I just run the ad and then when, and then when I'm like, okay, well there can be a, there can be an efficiency gained by just copying this ad because it's the same audience. And I know it's different for me because like I'm working with a lot of clients, whereas for you, it's your own company. And so for me, it's easier if I, in some cases, if I use ad sets because I know like a month from now, I have to go report, I have to pull a report on this. And so if I organize it in this fad, it's sometimes it's more about the organization of it. But what do you what do you think on ads? Yeah, ad sets? I would agree. I would say like you could structure it like this to where your ad is your photo, your text, your link, the things that go into it. Your ad set could be a bunch of different audiences, and you wouldn't need to change the core of the ad to reach a certain age group here, a certain location here. You could try different things in your set, and then the ad always remains the same. Okay. Um, that's how I've structured it in the past for ease. You can do, like, you could ignore sets and add, uh, and target ads this way without doing an ad set, but it's nice to, like, have one ad and then stay in your ad sets level and kind of shoot it out to your different groups. And then you know, like, well, I need to change the creative to make it fresh. You come back down to the ad level, the very bottom. Um, that's kind of nice for an organ. It's like Paul said, it's, it's mostly organization. Um, however, you want to structure it to make it easy to understand on you. Um, but that's just one way to think of it. Sets are kind of the next level above your general kind of ad. Okay. Yeah. Good question. So when we get into creating ads, and we have we have um, we don't have a whole lot of content left. We just have creating ads and um, showing you guys the uh, custom audiences. So this is where we talked about selecting your your marketing objective. So in phase one, your awareness phase, you'd be uh, most likely creating brand awareness. If you're a local business and you're only in like you only want to target someone in like let's say Brentwood or Nashville or something like that. Um, or Fra like Franklin and Brentwood, you could go reach because then it's going to give you, it's gonna give you less um, targeting options because it's just basically gonna be, we're gonna show everyone in this geographic area. And then, and your audience might get too small if you get any more specific than that. So you, that's the difference between reach and uh, brand awareness. And then in phase two, you would go with, uh, first with traffic. Um, because that's going to get you those clicks to your website. And then in phase three, you would go with, uh, I think, the most relevant to driving eventual, uh, have you guys have the ability to justify what you did. But um, for walking out of here today, just doing phase one is totally acceptable. And so your budget is going to be your budget. Um, you can set to run your ad continuously. I like to do a start and end date because it's another way to you know, you can get some work done, and you can schedule things out, and you don't have to come back, you don't have to worry about um, whether or not 
you keep getting charged by Facebook and you don't want to be anymore because you've set that end date, especially if you're doing a daily budget. It defaults to continuously, but you, might, you probably want to look at a start and end date. It'll tell you, you know, how much you're going to spend per week. Um, depending on the ad that you select, the uh, objective that you select, it's going to give you this option for ad delivery. And so when you're in uh, phase one, it's not going to be as relevant, but when you're getting into phase two, you can optimize it for conversions and you can put a conversion window on that. And all that really means is just that Facebook has a bunch of data that Facebook deems more like deems certain users more likely to uh, convert than other users and so and that's kind of how in a similar it's very very high level but that's similar to how Google works as well with optimizing Google ads for conversions versus just clicks basically so it's either what are the, what are the other choices there on the account? the other choices are um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna pull it up for, uh, on my machine because I don't have yes yeah, sorry my uh, we can go, we can actually go around here too. Is that the awareness consideration drop? So. You're talking about this one right here. The other choices on the yeah. drop down. Yeah, those should match the objective you chose on the last screen. Okay, so um, it's those three objectives. It, it should be those uh, eight or nine traffic, okay. reach, I'm engagement, sorry, yeah. conversions. You know, it, I think it pre fills that drop down based on what you click to the screen okay. before. Would there ever be any reason to click something different if that was your objective? I mean, so, why are they asking? That? It's going to, so it's going to be, uh, they're going to give you different options based on what you chose, what your objective was. So, in an objective where it's um, traffic, you're going to have link clicks, landing page views, impressions, and daily unique reach, okay. for example. And so it'll be a choice that you'll want to make around, um, it, it'll give you, like it says link clicks is recommended um, if you're trying to get the web traffic in phase two. But um, like, so it, for example though, if, but if you wanted to show your ad to as many, not even as many people as possible, but just show your ad as many times as possible, you could you could select impressions, but they recommend link clicks. Uh, I don't think there's ever really any reason to go with what they don't recommend unless you know, like there's a better option here. What were you gonna say? Uh, page views is new. They added it like in the last maybe month or two. They, they've updated so many things. But the funny thing is I actually ran a test when page views came out. I had uh, two duplicate ads. I just duplicated my ad and I put one optimized for um, cost per click or link clicks and then I set the other one to page views and at first page views all of a sudden my cost per result went way high higher than I normally like it to be it was like four or five dollars per view um, and my cost per link click was around like 120 which is where I usually like to stay is in that you know 50 cents to two dollar range but then once we got the data back in because I just let it set for a couple of weeks most of our conversions actually came from the View, which is shocking. So we were paying more for the result, but we were getting yeah. the result. And all the page view means is like, if you hit link clicks, it just means they clicked your ad and tried to go. It doesn't mean they stuck around and waited for the page to load and actually viewed it. With the page mm. view, it means they stuck around, waited for the page to load, and then actually scrolled some. They may not looked at the whole page, but they at least checked your page out. So when you click that one, uh, the algorithm then goes, okay, like this person clicked and didn't look, this person looked, so now it starts trying to find more people like her who actually took the time to look at the page. So it's really what you want. If you've got a long page, you may want them to stick around or if you've got valuable information. If you just have a quick offer like, hey, you know, special sale, something like that, you really don't care if they're on there a whole long time. You know, you'll probably get a better bang for your buck with cost per click. But if you really have valuable information, I'd go page views and test it. Like all of this is testing. You could run the same exact parameters on a different campaign and get totally different results because it's a different campaign. Yeah. So I always try to test a couple of things in the beginning and then weed out the ones that don't work and try to push the ones that are working further. Sorry. That's a great, no, that's really helpful, I think. I think it's great information. And the landing page view does require the pixel, so. Yes, it does. If you're not seeing that option, then, uh, or you're not 
not able to select that option. And I don't know if you, that. are you going to talk about the pixel checker so you can see if your pixel is actually working on your page? I think, yeah, we saw it um, when they installed. There's actually a new checker built into the okay. setup screen now. Okay. So you can quickly test the actual URL to see if you awesome. get to go. I still have the old one. So it's kind of cool to spy on people that see if they're using Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. If you want to check out your competition. <laughs> you made me think of something else, and then I forgot it. But I'll, oh, yeah. I'll write it right now. I'll come back later. But um, unique daily reach is if that it is what you want. It is kind of like what you want, what you want to achieve. Unique daily reach is going to be where it's only going to show your ad to people, uh, to the same person once a day. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I think like if, if you're seeing an ad that has that high frequency that we talked about, and it's not, and the cost per result is high, then that could be another way. Like that could be a learning, right? But, um, um, your next section in creating an ad would be your targeting. So again, like my recommendation for phase one was just to not not do this at all. But you might be, it, but it depends on the business. Like um, if you're a national business uh, or or multinational business um, in the medical industry, you may want to put some targeting in there. It's just going to um, just kind of make your audience smaller, and so that's fine. Like if you you know if you wanted to put um, so your detailed targeting in here. Um, and then you're, you're putting in your, your content. Uh, I recommend to use some kind of a URL that's gonna help you track your, your conversions back into Google Analytics. So when we do the Google Analytics class, I'll include this content in there because there's a lot going on today. But that's where this, uh, where you can use all these different fields to fill out your ad content and then put um, the link that you want to display um, as well as potentially um, you can put like a tracking parameter in it. Let me just make a quick note on this. Yeah. this can, on this one or the next one? This one's fine. Um, the display link is not the link that the person will go to when they click. Uh, the display link, which says optional, you don't even need it, directly affects what you see right here. But it does not mean that this button is going there. You can shorten it. You don't need to put it. You can make it anything you want. Not even sure why they give it to you. But don't don't confuse this with the link for the ad, because this does not mean that. It's simply another line that they display to users, and uh, you can delete it or keep it. It's up to you. But but sometimes you get confusing. I have a question on on photos, like that one in particular. I've been getting like the little caution symbol for like how many words I have in a photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is a lot of words, or I would have I would have gotten a little, the side. I would have gotten a little thing like, I'm not gonna reach as many people if you use this text. Yeah. What is the suggestion on that? They have a checker tool. Um, I figure out where it is, or you can type in like Facebook image checker, but you literally can load your image up and it'll rate on how likely it is to show and it'll give you like a green and <laughs> red, you know, it kind of color codes it. Um, I do that on everything. Okay. And it's not all, just because that one says, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Sometimes when they're reviewing it, they may come back. So it's it's like a loose guideline, but it usually helps you go, no, I don't need to use this. I gotta go find something else. Yeah. See, my problem, well, I was trying to do something for a trade show, so I was just trying to put the name of the trade show on there just so people could see it. But I mean, yeah. it was three words, and it kept like saying, "This is the NLM." I, uh, I, it could be I ignore. I, I ignore that. I run the ad. And yeah. Then, yeah, and it it nine times out of ten for me, it lets me run the ad, uh -huh. but then it, it may email me later and say your ad stopped running, and then I just resubmit it and it lets me run it again. Sometimes it'll punish you. You have to watch. Yeah. Like well, because we have a product too that has like you know it's a dashboard of like the product, so you wouldn't even read it, but technically it has words on it, so that was counting as part of the. This it's a gimmicky trick, but I'm sure you've noticed on Facebook if you'll think it's an image and then you're like, oh cool, I'm gonna go save this, and then you realize it's a video. That's the trick a lot of people are using to get around the words is that instead of having an image, they're putting their wordy image into a video because right now it, it doesn't catch that. So okay. I, I haven't been doing it because I think it's a little little cheap mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, it's just a matter of time before Facebook comes up with some other way to shut that down. Right. Um, but 
it is a way if you're wanting to like show something that you do want to communicate visually with words i would try video for that mm -hmm. yeah and note that the warning isn't the it's not that there's text in your image it's how big that text is and how much of the image it occupies oh, i think 20 okay. percent is the threshold okay so if you can have text in the image you're going to want to make it smaller so that that space is not 20 percent of your Put it that's what the warning actually is okay so you could still if you could resize the text maybe on that trade show image yeah. you might get past it as long as it's smaller and maybe in a corner or something yeah because like he was trying to i mean i know that you're putting like that in the you know the description but we were trying to hit, we get a we get a, a list of who's going to be attending so we were trying to see if this would work but i also don't want people to look at it if they're not going to the trade show either you know so it's me and if i put a lord at him it's, it might be like, oh, okay, okay I'm totally going to that show. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good point too. Um, so we talked about the options for uh, op optimizing the ad. Last thing on. So this would be phase three, creating an ad in phase three. You would have the option. You'd have the pixel installed. You would be able to uh, select something like this user made a purchase on my website as one of those nine goals that Chris talked about. Yeah. And um, that could be like a thank you. I mean, it might be a little creepy. I don't know, maybe not. I might be happy if Nike sent, like if I saw an ad from Nike saying like, thanks for. Well, you could throw it like in your case, you could throw out a coupon to previous there you go. customers. Like, thanks for buying. Here's five, 10% off your next order. You would want to know who completed the checkout. And yeah. you could do that with an ad here. Just note that this may, um, I'm not sure about the dot. You may be presented with a lot of options here, but they won't work unless you have a developer and add those extra um, events like I mentioned. It may let you choose purchase, but if you didn't link up a purchase event to a button or a thank you page, it's not gonna actually work. So page view is the default, so that will always work. But just make sure if you want a different conversion, you first make sure your pixel has been enabled for that specific event. So on the, how did you get it to work? Do you bookmark it where they come up on the left? It chooses the, the most right? recent one. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> so, so it's different for, it's probably yeah. different for me because yeah. I'm running these ads all the time. But yeah, so library audiences. Okay. Yeah. So if you click create a custom audience and let's see. Okay. So yeah, you're getting, you're going to be getting these options. Um, it might be, hey Chris, is this going to be because we just installed the Pixel? And I'm seeing different options, obviously, because I've had Pixels installed, but like, it looks like it's going to let her upload a customer file right now, but in terms of the website traffic. Yeah, you're going to want to oh, actually the website click traffic. Website traffic real quick and see. Yeah, there you go. So you're good. So now you can, if you do all websites, so it'll let you already do. Now you're, you're not going to have a huge number because you just put the Pixel in, but that's how you would do it. I always name that like the main page, like visitors, or something where you clearly yeah. that, and that's what this is. So if you go to um, and then you create it, and now it's it's always accessible for you to use as much as you need. Okay. You'll see populating, like I said, for the first few hours, but then it'll have yeah, to you can do uh, as soon as people start getting okay. tracking sticks. You can do and you can just do that to split it up. Now you can do Facebook. And then all the maps can change. You can change it. Yeah. And then so the site visits. You can change it. And then the last one for you. Yeah, I just know. And all those uh, options. So my experience with that hasn't been as positive. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. 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 great. The place to pick up all at one time. So they will, like, if I put a $200 budget in for the school test for like over the course of the month, then, like, I would spend a few dollars every day or whatever. Spend like $150 and like in the last second of the split test. So there's like this flood of traffic. So they so just to get the test. Yeah. 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 So I think they were. I think they're still doing it, and it's not. It's not like totally working out. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. Sure. Try an awareness goal next time. Awareness objective next time instead of reach, and then you, you can still you can still do the. Uh, Okay. And see if that performs because I know the awareness ads will give you more some more options in terms of like setting up um, basically setting up the features of the ad just nothing too complicated but it'll allow you to um, 
optimize it a little bit more. Okay. And so I would I would do I wouldn't do impressions the next time for something like that on the okay. page. But on the Twitter side of things, you can uh, target followers of different handles, um, which can be very relevant to some businesses. Um, Twitter also has really really advanced in uh, behavioral targeting. Facebook, um, I mean I. I would argue that like while the Twitter ad is probably less relevant than the Facebook ad, um, their behavioral targeting, they really can do an amazing job at that just because of the amount of data that they have on the platform. So you can really get, you can definitely build an audience there in the same way that you can. And just if you go to ads.twitter.com, it's actually going to be a lot easier to build a to build a Twitter ad than the Facebook ad because Facebook's got you going through business manager and all that. but. Um, on the Twitter side, um, we'll say to you that Twitter and I think LinkedIn also have pixels that you can install just like we did to Facebook, and it serves the same purpose to track events that you specifically link back to your Twitter ad campaign, LinkedIn ad campaign. So they all include pixels um, that are installed in similar ways, and that's the point. It's just to connect your your list of Twitter users with actual website events, and then run ads against that. So. Yeah. Does anyone have any specific questions on Twitter that we can help answer? Or Brittany, do you have anything? Have you done anything on Twitter? Most of it's just not. It's not that relative with the other stuff. We're about to start getting into Snapchat. Um, so, but Twitter. It just seems to involve a little bit more hands-on with Twitter, and most of the time, by someone's tweeted and commented and getting the client to like stop on because you can't field all the questions. It's like, yeah. That it's one, a big commitment. I think Twitter's really great if you're an internal, like if you're doing your own stuff or you're going to be sitting managing it and watching it. In my world where I'm like the mediator and the client's like, I don't want to do this for myself, Twitter's a hard thing for us. Um, but if you're going to sit and watch it, it's a really great way to get in front of your uh, clients. You can do all kinds of neat stuff with it. Um, you just, it's a little bit more time consuming. How would you do cost wise? Like what is it really? Because like Facebook's relatively cheap, but like LinkedIn, not so much. Um, we haven't really done a lot with the Twitter ads, just because I knew I couldn't get the client to buy into the <coughs> ads. And I'm like, you're not going to buy it and make it successful. We're not going to waste the money right. running it. Yeah, it's pretty comparable to Facebook. It's uh, it's going to be around, um, like to, if you, you're setting like a fifty dollar budget against the. Facebook ad and a fifty dollar budget against the Twitter ad, you're gonna see similar. Uh, you're gonna see similar like cost per result. The only difference is that like <clears throat> on Facebook, you're probably gonna just get better results, right. um, and you're gonna have more relevancy because Facebook, the way that the platforms work, Facebook's gonna be showing you. Showing your ad in the in the news feeds in a relevant way, and on Twitter, um, you're going to become less relevant faster just because of the way the content is right. on that platform. So, so, uh, but you can probably. I mean, if, if you're managing Twitter and, yeah. and you want to sponsor tweets, um, which is basically like Twitter ads, then you're going to get. You could get a lot of bang for like. You know, putting ten dollars on a sponsored tweet that's like relevant for that day, you know, and getting it out in front of a specific audience that's not your followers. So it can be an amazing strategy, like in the right situation. So I think it's great for like customer service situations. I think it's great as a communication. If you want to like actively be yeah. interacting with people when they're interested, then Twitter and the Facebook messaging you can do uh, Facebook campaigns where it's messenger campaigns, but those ones, again, involve you being active because that's a communication style of advertising. Yeah. It's not passive where you're just putting the ad out, okay, you take care of yourselves, we're gonna check in every couple of days, see how it's going, make adjustments. Like, when you get in, in my opinion, and I might- Totally, well, if you know, I was just gonna say, like, if you, if something happens, and the best example I can think of right off the top of my head is like, in the Super Bowl a few years back when the lights went out and the game was delayed by like 40 minutes or whatever, like, if you know something just happened and people are going to be tweeting about it or going to Twitter to find out about it, like, you can spot, you can 
tweet, and then that's going to go to your followers. But then you can also sponsor that tweet to get it in front of followers of other people. And if you have something to say that's interesting in that moment, then that can be a huge win for you. They can only cut. That's where like the cost. You can you know, twenty bucks or something, and put it in front of tens of thousands of people that might. And not that you would bash a competitor's brand, but like if, if it's an opportunity for you to say something where you can get out in front of somebody else's audience with a good message, then... The winner of that day was Oreo. Yeah. Yeah. They put out a tweet uh, when the lights went out in the stadium, and it, was, it just went viral. I don't know how much money they could find it. Probably didn't have to put a lot, because it just got so much organic engagement, because it was plugged. It was like you can dunk in the dark too, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Wittiness on Twitter is a real winner. If you yeah. can be witty, you you can do well in there. Yeah, it's kind of unfair to use the Oreo example in this context, but like, but there are, if you can think that way, or you know, even in your marketing strategies going into the next year, just sketch out some possibilities of what like what events are coming up in the world that. You might that might be relevant to your business that you might want to chime in on or something, and it's really, it's kind of like a creative Southwest process. Southwest is great at Twitter. Yeah, like Southwest uses it for uh, customer service. Like if someone's like, oh, I just had a problem with Southwest. Like they're monitoring what they're mentioned, and then they'll immediately be like, What's your problem? You know, and yeah. like they're like, Well, it's this, and then they're like contacting the airlines, going, Go to here, we've got you fixed. And it's like. Um, and then when the whole thing happened with United, you know, Southwest is yeah. in there. But, you know, it's you've got to be more hands-on with it. Um, Have you guys seen the Wendy's video? Like, on, there's a, if you were there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were at the same thing. We were at the same, like, uh, workshop, Jennifer and I, in August. And we, the, um, one of my co-presenters showed this video from Wendy's. And if you just search it on YouTube, you'll find it. But it's like... This one guy who's like he's probably a, I don't know who he was, but he he was like a, a blogger or a vlogger or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, his video was just like trying to catch Wendy's off guard on Twitter, and when, whoever's tweeting for Wendy's at that time was just killing it because like everything he said, they would reply to it. It was hilarious. And so Southwest Wendy, I mean, but larger. Brands, I don't really know who's, if it's someone internally or if it's a, a larger agency. Well, they have like, like full departments just sitting around watching Twitter, so they can be relevant. If you come back a day later and like, hey, it's like, you know, I'm done with this conversation. Right. You know, shiny object, I'm on to the next. Okay. Yeah. So then, kind of wrapping up with LinkedIn, to Chris's point, you can upload, you can use a pixel um, to retarget your website visitors. Um, you can upload a list of customers, which is similar to what we just showed you on Facebook.